the hitting of a hammer on a bell causes vibrations too. How does the sound get from the bell to your ear? Well, the vibration of the bell disturbs the surrounding air molecules and the sound travels through the air to your ear in the form of a wave. Those waves travel into your ear where they vibrate your eardrum. The sound waves travel to your ear and your brain interprets the sound. The same thing happens for any sound you hear, whether it's a musical instrument or a dog barking or a siren. The sound waves travel to your ear and your brain interprets the sound. Pretty neat, huh? Sound waves. To better understand exactly what is happening when you hear a sound, let's take a closer look at sound waves. First, you should know that sound waves have the ability to travel through any medium. A medium is any solid, like the ground, or a gas, like air, or a liquid, like water. In fact, sound must use a medium in order to travel. So, for example, in outer space, you can't hear anything because there is no air, so there is no medium that the sound waves can travel through. You can better understand how a wave is formed by watching what happens when a stone hits the water. The water is disturbed, causing energy, waves, to go out from the source of the disturbance. Sound works the same way. A sound creates a disturbance and pushes the molecules away from it in the form of a wave. If you could see a sound wave, it would look something like this. A sound wave is a special type of wave called a longitudinal wave. Where the molecules are squeezed together, it's called compression. Where the molecules are stretched apart is a rarefaction. A series of compressions and rarefactions that represent the transfer of energy is called a longitudinal wave. But sound waves can also be represented like this. Notice how the wave goes up and down with high points called crests and low points called troughs. The crests that you see represent compressions and the troughs rarefactions. 